I bought this broken Lenovo laptop on Facebook Marketplace. Let's fix it. The seller on Facebook Marketplace said that this laptop works fine, other than the two USB ports on the side here. And you can probably see on this one here that you've got some damage to this one, so I wonder if that's the entire problem or if there's something else going on. Let's turn it on and see what it's doing. So the seller also told me that some devices work fine, but others don't. I've got a couple of devices here. I've got a USB-C adapter that converts to a USB-A. I've got a couple of USB-A flash drives. I've got a USB adapter here for plugging in a mouse and keyboard. Let's try that first. Okay, that made the chime as though something was plugged in. And as though something was unplugged. Let's plug in one of these USB flash drives. That did not make a chime. Did not make a chime when I took it out either. Let's try one more. Okay, nothing there. Let's try the top port. Nothing there either. Let's try plugging that in with USB-C now. Okay, that made a chime. Now let's plug this in through USB-C and see if it works through there. Okay, that also made a chime. So that seems to be all right. Let's plug in one more flash drive. did not make a sound. This flash drive has a light on it. And I don't see the light on. Actually, I do see the light on. It's just very dim. Let's plug in our USB tester and see what happens. Over here, we've got only 3.5 volts on a USB port. That should be 5 volts. Let's try plugging in another USB drive to that and see what we've got. Okay, as soon as I plug that in, it kills the USB port. So we're obviously overloading that USB port. This tells me there's something internally wrong with this laptop. So let's take it apart. So the laptop is still on. You can see the blinking light here. It's in sleep mode. I'm going to leave it on so that we can test some voltages here. If we've only got 3.5 volts, my guess is something is shorting to ground. Let's grab the thermal camera and see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, we've got the thermal camera out. And we're looking for anything that's hot. What do we have here? Hot spot, and it is right here. Uh, yeah, I see a chip on the board there that is very burnt. Uh, let's throw it under the microscope. So this is the chip we were seeing on the thermal camera that was getting hot. You can see there's a big hole in the center of it. Now the USB ports are right here. It looks like the positive leg of this USB port runs through it right here. So this is probably some kind of switching regulator for the USB port. So if we look here on the board view, and it's going to be right over here, we've got chip U2 here. So let's try and find U2 on our schematic here. Left side USB port times 2, that seems to be what we need. Okay, so this is the chip we're looking at, and it is a SY6288 SOT23-5. I managed to find a data sheet for that. Yeah, it looks like it comes in a couple of different packages. Okay, now let's see if we can find something on another board that matches that. So I looked through all of my boards, and this is the only one that I could find that has a USB 3.0 port. Let's see if we've got a chip on this board that can work for this one. I'm going to look up a schematic for this board. Okay, I found a schematic for that board, and I found this USB controller on the board, U6301 and it is a SY6288 DCAC. The chip on the Lenovo laptop is one of these SOT23-5 chips, whereas the one on my spare board 
is an MSOP8 chip. So we can't connect this directly to the board because this is a 5-pin chip and this is an 8-pin chip. But we can figure out what pins correspond to what, and we can run a couple bodge wires and we can probably get this to work, just for testing before I go and buy the SOT23-5. Now we've just got to find where U6301 is on this spare board. We found U6301, it seems to be this chip right here. We're going to go ahead and desolder that and see if we can get it to work on the other board. I like to always clean up my parts boards after I desolder parts from them, just so that they're good to go for the next time that I need them. So if you see the dot there, that means that this pin is ground, in, in, enable, this one is OCB, and then these three are all outputs. Now for our purposes, we only need one output, so we can get rid of these two, and we only need one input, so we can get rid of one of these two. Unfortunately, we lost a couple traces here. That's totally fine though. Let's give that a shot and see if it works. We've got it turned back on. Let's see what we're getting for voltage the bottom port. We've got 5 volts now, no longer 3.5. And out of the top port, the one that's broken, that one we've also got 5 volts. Let's see if we can plug in some USB devices and see if they'll show up. Well that one made a noise like it's going to show up. And you can see here we have our USB device. When I unplug it, it disappears, so it seems like we fixed that problem. With that fixed, let's put this laptop back together. Once this laptop's fixed the right way, with the right chip, I can sell this laptop on eBay for five to six hundred dollars. I paid three hundred, so that's a two to three hundred dollar profit on this. Now I'll be ordering the correct chip for this online. I just wanted to show you that it's possible to do if you've got spare parts lying around. You can save money and keep things out of the landfill. It didn't take much to fix that laptop. Maybe the next one will be more of a challenge. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.